Hi, this is Finch. Um, I've had many people ask me about how I animate and go about using my programs. So I had this idea of recording myself, creating a shot from an animation and talking about it so it might help you guys out when it comes to making your own and stuff. Uh, I'll go over the step-by-step -step process about how I go through completing a shot. This first video covering sketching and lining and following videos covering colouring, shading and compiling together in a video editing program like Premiere or After Effects. Uh, this footage will be time-lapsed and I'll be commentating over most of it, talking about what I'm doing and pointing things out and giving tips to hopefully like, help you guys out. Um, I'll say this now that this will be my own process, so it's okay if yours is different. I'm in no way saying that this is the best. Uh, I just thought it might help people to see my process and maybe inspire some. Who knows? I just, I don't know, it'll be a good idea. Uh, yeah, I will also say yeah, I'll be commentating, and I'm not used to commentation, so there probably will be some mistakes. I hope you don't mind some super unprofessional tutorials, because, wow, I don't know how to do this. Let's go. Let's do this. Okay, so to start off in real time, I'll show you guys how I set up. So this is what my usual setup will look like, but just to help you guys out, I'll start from the very beginning. So the first thing I'll do is I'll open a new canvas at 1920 by 1080 pixels. So that's sort of standard widescreen. Um, so I'll end up having this right here. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to control A, control C this. So I've copied the size of this canvas. And I'm going to then get my crop tool and I'm going to expand this canvas by dragging the edges like that. Also, I made my background color this sort of beige, so I get this sort of beige outline. And then I'm going to control backspace to fill that in and then control V to paste my what I copied. So now I sort of have my beige background and I have this white sort of representation of 1920 by 1080. And I'm going to name it that just so I know. So 1920 by 1080. And what this does is that it shows me sort of my main screen size. So what, so say if I wanted the character's head to be this big on the screen, I can, you know, judge it by the size of this screen here. And then um, this sort of outside area allows me to sort of draw sort of outside the canvas, so it sort of has um, not quite the ability that Flash does, but like if you want to say, you know, a character comes in from the screen, you'll be able to kind of enter off screen, stuff like that. Okay, so we have this set up like this. Um, the next thing you'll need, I'll get rid of it now, but you'll want to bring up your timeline. So you go to Window and then Timeline, and then you can click the little button that says Create Video Timeline, and you'll get this. Um, now, if you start off with this, there is um, a little button right in the corner, but next to it, it says Once, or Forever, or Three Times. Um, and you can click that and it'll take you to the video timeline. If you don't have that little button, it means you don't have CS6 extended and yeah, you won't have video timeline. And that's something I can't cover in this tutorial, but if you have CS6 extended, maybe, maybe you'll enjoy this. Okay, so uh, we have our um, sort of uh, layer here with our 1920 by 1080. So that's here on this timeline. And what we can do is we can make a new layer, um, and that can be, say, our sketch layer. So we could probably draw like that, and then this will go on for the duration of that. And if we want it to cut shorter, we can press the little scissors button, and it will cut it. And then this is usually the process I do. Say I want to make a new frame, I'll cut it, I'll erase that layer, and then I'll draw my next one. And then, as you can see when you play it, it goes like that. So that's essentially how the timeline works. Um, there's also uh, little knickknacks like if you press this little button to the side that looks like four lines next to an arrow, you can get your sort of um, onion skin settings, timeline frame rate settings and stuff like that. What you'll want to do is set your timeline, timeline frame rate to whatever you want. I usually work on 24 frames per second, so you can set it to 24 if you want. OBS probably isn't picking this up, but I assure you I'm doing something. Um, you can also view your onion skin settings from there, so you can see how many frames before and after you want to see in your onion skin. So say like this. Um, I set it to a shortcut, so Control-O brings up my onion skin, so it's nice and easy. Um, and I think 
think that's it. Oh, also importing audio. You'll see there's a little audio track layer down here. All you do is click the little musical icon, click on add audio, and you can add whatever audio you have in your files there. So say you have like part 26 in a map, you can upload your little cut part 26 and you'll get your audio in here like this. So yeah, that's basically my setup. Um, I'll get on with the time lapse. Okay, so this is a time lapse of me doing my keyframes. So it's just essentially laying down your keys. So I'm just doing the main poses of the animation. Um, I'm going to be timing them out to the music I'll be using, which in this case it's a map part. So I'll have my little map part audio down there. Most of this footage, to be honest, is me really struggling to get this mouth right, but I get there in the end. Um, and I add like a little breakdown in there just to sort of change the movement a bit. And then once I'm happy with those, I'll add a few more details, you know, like the fur there, and it, it'll make it easier to in between later. And then here's the preview of it so far. So just the keyframes. Okay, so here I'm starting to do some of my first in-between, so they'll be like still really rough and choppy at this point, but I'm starting to lay down my first sort of impressions of movement, I guess. So what I'm doing is I'm just um, turning on the onion skin. Usually I'll do my onion skin settings will be showing the two before and the two after, because whenever I in between, I automatically set the frame to three frames long, if that makes sense. So if you see the frame I'm working on at the bottom, that's three frames long. And if I sit my cursor in the middle of that with my onion skin settings on showing two before and two after, I can see, I can happily see the frame before and the frame after. And you can also see that I've colored the frames blue and red. Uh, the way I've done that is I've just had say blue as the foreground color and red as the background color i've locked the sketch layers and i filled them in with those colors um this just makes it easier to see when onion skinning because if they're both black then i get a bit line blind but um i keep flipping back and forth um so i don't just rely on the onion skin because otherwise i'll risk just simply tracing in between the frames which i do some i do do as well i do do um but yeah, just to make sure that shapes don't go all weird or something drifts or I don't know. Things like that always happen to me anyway because uh, I'm lazy sometimes. But yeah, I'll just flip back and forth just to make sure there's nothing really obvious that like, like the eye drifts down too far or something. Just little things like that. So yeah, this will just... This is just like long footage of me struggling to draw frames, a very awkward three-quarter angle there. Um, but yeah, this is essentially just the process at the moment. On the timeline at the bottom there, all my frames are sort of on separate layers, if you can see like their little steps. Um, at the end, once I've finished all of the sketches, I'll compile them together in one video group, so I just drag them down onto the same layer and then it'll be a bit tidier. But for now, when I'm just when I'm just working, laying down all the frames first, I'll just leave them as little steps. Um, yeah, I just whenever whenever I make want to make a new in between, I just go through and I cut a layer, and then I just draw on that. Uh, there, just to help me with my ear movements, I've drawn some arcs from the ear fur and like some fur on his face. Um, that's a technique you can use, but d mainly it's for like sweeps and stuff. But I just used it to sort of help me figure out the lengths of the ears, I guess, when he's swinging his head. And uh, there's my favorite thing to do: the good old smears. He looks, he looks great. And then here's what we have so far. So this is with a few in-betweens and breakdowns. Okay, so here finally I'm adding sort of my final in-betweens. So I'm just going literally in between what I have at the moment and just adding more just to make it smoother, perhaps um, enhance the timing a bit. But yeah, that's 
pretty much all I'm doing here. I'm just cutting in the frames I already have, drawing in between them, making them shorter or longer. Most of these in-betweens are making into twos. Um, I used to work in threes a lot, but I got self-conscious it was looking too choppy. So I've been trying to use more twos than ones, which you can see at the bottom there, the really short ones are the ones. Um, and that's usually reserved for faster movement, the ones. Um, yeah. And then here's the final sketch here with all my in-betweens added. The next step will be lines. My favourite. Then finally I'll be going over the lining. So essentially all this is is going over what I've already drawn in the sketch, but much smoother and it takes much longer. <laughs> this is definitely my least favourite part of the process, um, just because I like to make my lines really smooth. Um, I wish I could make them sketchy, but it just makes the colouring a lot more complicated. But yeah, pretty much what I'm doing just here, I'm just going over my sketch lines. I do have the onion skin on. Um, you can see the lines uh, of the frame before. That's just to make sure there is no uh, boiling lines or any drifting or anything. We want to make sure everything maintains its shape and doesn't really stand out when you watch it and looks weird. To make the lines in the first place, I did just make a new layer above all of my sketch layers and then I just cut them down so that they were the um, at the same amount of lining uh, frames as I did the sketch frames and then I dragged them all down onto one video group so they're all on the same flat line there um, and then I just go through one by one and line them in order so I don't line the keyframes first I just line them in order um, maybe a better way of doing it but who knows this is just my method so you can experiment with different ways of doing it if you like. Good old smear there. But yeah, that's essentially it, just drawing over my, my sketches. I know some people uh, just line their keyframes and in between later. Um, they don't sketch their in betweens, they go straight into lining the in betweens. I personally don't do that, but you can you can do that if you like. It's probably a lot faster. I just I feel like I'd make a mess. And then here's the final line render. And then on to colouring. 